Hello, I'm Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guides to Adobe Premiere Elements and Adobe Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements together. And here we are in Adobe Premiere Elements 15. Now, earlier we learned to create a project and we learned to gather media into our project assets. Now we're going to do some actual editing. Now here in my project, I have already gathered some project assets. These are video clips that were shot with my camcorder. They were here on my hard drive and I brought them into my project assets panel. By the way, the project assets panel is one of the few panels that does not close automatically. You know, so there's a little pin here in the upper right hand corner. As long as that is toggled on, the panel will stay open until you click on the tab again to close it. If you prefer for it to close automatically, you can uncheck that option and then whenever you click away from it it will close automatically okay keep the pin option on we'll grab a couple of files and just sort of drag them on here to the timeline and as we learned earlier we can zoom in or out on our timeline by using the slider in the upper right hand corner of the timeline or just use our plus and minus buttons we also by the way let me move the playhead back here we also by the way can use the backslash key that's right above the enter or return key and when we click that our project will expand so that uh, we can see our entire project or contract so that we can see our entire project at once. Now the basics of assembling or adding clips on your timeline is just what you saw right there. You just pretty much drag them down from the project assets panel. Once they're on the timeline, we can do a couple of things with them. For instance, if our clip is too long, it starts too early, ends too late, and we want to trim off some from either end. Trimming is very simple. You simply hover your mouse over one end or the other of the clip. You get that little indicator there. That's the trim indicator. Drag it in and it trimmed off the beginning of that clip. Drag it from this side and it trimmed off the end of that clip. And now we've just got the main portion of the clip, the part that we want to keep. That's a basic trim. By the way, you notice that when I did trim and the same thing will happen when I untrim, that all of the clips to the right moved in to fill in the gap. There we go. Or moved out to accommodate my expansion here. This is also true if I were to add a clip, say between two clips. If I drag that down and add that right there, you notice that everything moves off to the right. Now that's called rippling, and rippling can be a little bit complicated, but for the most part, 99% of the time, it does exactly what you want to do. If you want to add something in the middle of your movie, it moves the rest of your movie out of the way to allow that to be inserted in the movie. If you want to remove something from your movie, selecting it and just pressing the delete key, it fills in the gap by sliding everything from the right to the left to fill in the gap. Okay, we trimmed from either end of a clip. We can also slice a clip. That means cutting it in half. Just move the CTI, that's the playhead here, to a position that we want to slice. And then when we hover our mouse over it, you notice we get a little scissors icon. And when I click on those scissors, it cuts the clip in half. Now we have two different halves and we can select one and delete it. Or we can simply leave them as two separate halves and expand them or trim them any way we want. So those are the three basic moves, right? add to the timeline, trim, and split. Now let's talk about one other thing with slicing. I'm just gonna add a couple of clips here to an upper timeline, and then uh, we'll just roll this up a little bit here so we have some room. You can have, by the way, up to 99 tracks of audio and video on your timeline. So there's a lot of room to do some special effects in here, and we show you how to use many, many tracks of video on your timeline in our books. Anyway, I'm going to position the CTI here above three different clips on our timeline. And notice that if I don't have any clips selected, I'm just gonna click off here. If I don't have any clips selected, when I click on the split or the scissors icon, notice what happens. Every single clip along that playhead or along that CTI gets sliced. I'm gonna control Z or command Z to undo that. Watch what happens though when I have a clip selected on the timeline. Click on split clip there. Now only that clip is selected. So that's a very important distinction to understand. Uh, one other thing to notice here is we talked about inserting a clip. If I were to drag a clip here down to the timeline and insert right here between these two clips, watch what happens. Okay, what happened with rippling here? I'm just gonna press the backslash key so you can see the whole timeline. We inserted a clip and it split every clip on every other track and shoved it off to the right. Sometimes we want that. Sometimes we built our movie up and we want to add a clip in the middle 
and then have everything else stay in position on down the timeline. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we only want to add to the particular track that we're adding video to and have that one ripple and no other tracks. I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to control Z or command Z to undo what I just did. I'm going to drag a clip on down to my timeline between these two clips on track one again, but this time I'm going to hold down the alt or the option key. Watch what happens. When I insert my clip and let go, notice that only track one uh, does the rippling track one everything moves on down but everything else stays in position now there are a couple of tricks here using the control or command key and using the alt key when you add clips to your timeline to affect how rippling acts or how rippling affects the other clips on your timeline uh, we show you how to use those in the book and uh, we show you how to use rippling then to your advantage. But that's basically how the timeline works. You add clips to your timeline, you insert between clips, you trim, you split, and then you just sort of arrange the clips in whatever order you want in order to tell your story. Once you got that mastered, you got about 90% of the program down. It's all about editing. In part four though, we're gonna show you how to add some basic transitions and fades. Hope you'll join me for that. And if you wanna know everything about this program, be sure to check out our tips and tutorials at moviepicks.com and our books available on amazon.com. Those moviepicks.com guides, they are invaluable. I'm Steve Grizzetti. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again real soon.